Matthew chapter 24, just going to read one verse. Verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure do bless your holy name. We thank you for the good singing. Lord, our hearts have been blessed. Our souls have been edified in the singing. Oh, Lord, we could leave right now. Said it was just good to come to the house of God, enjoy assembly with your people, and enjoy their presence and their company. Enjoy the good singing. Enjoy just being around the things of God. But Lord, it's preaching time. I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. I pray you'd speak to hearts now. Encourage your people. Lord, strengthen them. And Lord, help them. Lord, in the days to come, to learn that you're the great burden bearer. God, you can bear our burdens. And Lord, you can do great things through us if we'll yield ourselves as instruments in your hands. Thank you, Lord, for always standing by our side. And thank you for being a great God. Bless now. Speak to hearts. Bless those that are working with the children on the other side. I pray those young children, as they are taught the Word of God, they find a soft spot in their hearts that it would lodge in. And when they reach the age of accountability, they'll trust Christ at an early age. Uh, Lord, there's several of those children over there you've been dealing with about salvation. I pray, Lord, that you'd open their understanding. And if today's the day for them to trust you, I pray they just get saved tonight. And Father, I do pray for those who are working with our teens, that you'd bless them and help them. And God, I pray that you would protect them from all the peer pressure of this age. And God, you'd insulate their minds and their hearts for the honor and glory of Christ. Uh, now, blessed throughout this service, we'll thank you and praise you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. I see three things in this verse as a way of introduction. The first thing I'd like you to notice is the contrast. We see that it says, For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west. My dear friends, they say that is true. And the lightning starts in the east and flashes to the west. The contrast is, when I look around at what's going on in our country today, it seems like whatever starts out in the west... Uh, eventually works its way eastward. Uh, things that used to not even be mentioned in inner circles and in the uh, quiet places of people's lives uh, are now wide open and for view and public uh, uh, information. And there's a lot of things uh, that happens in the western part of our country uh, uh, that years ago it wouldn't have flown. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, just a few years ago it wouldn't have flown. There's things coming out of there. I think those people have lost their mind. Uh, I mean, they're pounding their fist about sanctuary cities. Uh, they're having all these homeless camps. People are moving out because their property values are going down. Uh, uh, listen, uh, 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 the Bible says if a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. Uh, and in America now, the economy's so good. Uh, there's enough jobs for them people to work. The problem is they don't want to work. Uh, uh, but we're protecting them. We're giving them every handout. Uh, and that's going to work its way eastward. Uh, the lifestyle's out there. And all that's going on out there before long will be camping right here in the Midwest. Uh, I see a great contrast. And I know that's not popular preaching, but it's true. Hmm? There's a lot of wickedness and debauchery and liberalism coming out of uh, California. What gets me this Hollywood crowd? They don't even live there. But they're going to tell us how to live. Are you listening? Anyway, that's a Nancy Pelosi's office. Uh, 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 you, she can't even get to her office without passing all kinds of filth and homelessness. and all. They're having to pay city workers uh, 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 hundreds of thousands of dollars to clean up the waste, the human waste. Uh, and those workers are getting sick uh, uh, because those people are even too lazy to use a port lead I mean, it's a mess. Before long, it'll be here. I see folks sitting around Florence, and I'm here to tell you, well-able-bodied people, but they'd rather hold up a sign and you give them a handout than walk two feet to McDonald's or to a, 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 a retail shop or even... Everybody's hiring. Why don't they want to work, huh? Mm. Listen, I'm all for helping folks that aren't well-able. I'm all for helping handicapped folks. I'm all for helping those that can't help themselves. But I'm telling you, we're in a mess. We've got to a place in America where they're saying, let's give people that aren't even of our country health care benefits that folks that have worked 20 and 30 years on the job can't even get. 
I'm telling you, we're in a mess. All right, that really got you excited, didn't it? It is the truth. Thank you. Hmm? We, we got a mess. Now listen, I love America. Thank God for America. Thank God for men and women that bled and died for us having the liberties we have. But I'm telling you, America's in a sad shape. And, and I'm telling you, a lot of these folks that are up there in Washington do not represent the common man and woman of America anymore. Huh? Well, that, that, that went over like a lead balloon. Hmm. But I don't care. It's still true. I see the contrast. Now, notice the confidence the Lord speaks in this. He says, For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, look right here, so shall. Didn't say, well, maybe. Said, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Can I help you with something? So I said this morning, He's coming. Hmm? Mark her down, the Lord is coming. Amen. Hmm? It's impossible for God to lie. And God said He's coming back, and He's coming. Right. And he said, so shall. Now, you can't bank on everything our president says. You can't bank on everything the bank says. Right. You can't bank on much anymore. But one thing you can bank on is what Jesus said. He said He's coming, uh, and He is. What a blessing. And we see the contrast, we see the confidence, but I want you to notice the coming of Christ. It says, For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. As I said this morning, Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 25, is written to the Jews as a sign. The Bible makes it clear that the Jews sought for a sign and the Greeks for wisdom. And we find that the Jews, even to this day, are always looking for a sign. And as a sign, Jesus gave them these teachings to understand what it would be for when the Son of Man would come back. And earlier in this chapter, we find He's dealing with the Jews as a sign. He says there in verse number 7, For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Uh, as we sit here tonight, I've been told there's some 130 wars going on uh, across this globe. Uh, uh, he goes on to say there'll be uh, uh, famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Uh, uh, as we sit here tonight, uh, there are parts of the globe uh, that are in a famine. Uh, there are parts of the globe that are facing pestilences. Uh, there are parts of the globe that have faced terrible earthquakes and terrible storms. Uh, uh, you just turn on and look what happened to the Bahamas. Uh, uh, do you realize uh, that 120 years ago uh, an earthquake was such a rare thing there was one happened in a decade. Uh, uh, do you realize there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds that happen every day right now uh, uh, to where they happen so often uh, that they've got to reach close to six and a half on the Richter scale for us to even take note. Uh, he's given a sign to the Jews that his coming is near. Look what else he says. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Have you ever seen a time where people wear their feelings on their shirt sleeve like today? Sure. I mean, you can't even crack a joke with anybody anymore. Yeah, Everybody is so offended at everything. Hmm? Now, I grew up in the day with Archie Bunker and Don Rickles. Those guys wouldn't even make it. I mean, those guys, uh, they, I mean, in, in comedians in those days, I mean, uh, uh, you think of Milton Berle and a lot of those guys, and they were funny and they did a lot of comedy, even Johnny Carson. Uh, those things would never make the airways today because everybody is offended. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, we've gotten to the point where everybody's offended with, with race rights and everything else. Everybody wears their, 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 their feelings on their shirt sleeve. Hmm? And can I say, everybody hates Israel except a few Americans. Hmm? We've got to that point where everybody's easily offended. In verse 11, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. About every decade, somebody will rise up into some cult claiming to be Christ. We've, we've seen it, we see it, we see it. There's so many false teachings, so many false Bibles, so many perverted doctrines today. Uh, uh, so much happens that we don't even take note anymore. It says, because of iniquity, uh, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Yep. Where is that charity spirit that people used to have? Used to, people help their neighbor. 
used to. If somebody's going through a hard time, people would, get, would care and go help. But the love of many wax cold today. Yeah. We're in such a hurry, and we're only concerned about ourselves and so self-centered that when things can go on all around us, and we're oblivious to because we really don't care. Yeah. And then look what he says in verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. This is a sign of His coming to the Jews. Now we that are believers, we that have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ through repentance and faith, realize we don't endure to the end. I'm not having to endure to keep my salvation. Right. This is written to the Jews. And He's dealing with the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. And those that endure to the end, those that will go through the great tribulation period. If you look down at verse number 21, he mentions it. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time no, nor ever shall be. And can I say, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. It's the time of great tribulation. Now, for a little Bible astrology, what simply means, you all know we live in the grace age, the church age. We know the Lord Jesus is going to take His church out of here. We know 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. We know 1 Corinthians chapter 15, a moment, a twinkling eye. We know the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then uh, 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 the trump of God shall sound, and, and the Lord shall descend, on, and, and which is out of our cage. Uh, uh, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to be with the Lord. So, so shall we ever be with Him. And my dear friends, that is not His second coming. We rise to meet Him in the air. So the church will be taken out, then the great tribulation period happens on earth for seven years. There will be a one world government. The Antichrist will come on the scene. He'll rule and reign. Uh, 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 people will pay allegiance to him. Uh, uh, they'll take the mark of the beast and their souls will be damned. It is during that seven year period that Jesus will purge Israel. You remember in John 1, 14, He came into His own, His own received Him not, but as many as received Him to them gave He power to become the sons of God. Thank God for that verse. That gave us ability to trust Christ. But they rejected Him. And because Israel rejected Him, because Israel rejected Him, had Him crucified, they're going to have to pay for that. And Israel will be judged for seven years. We do find that out of that great tribulation period, 144,000 Jews will be saved, 12,000 for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Revelation 7 tells us there's a great number that no man can number that will believe, that won't receive the mark of the beast, but will come to salvation to the Lord. Now, we don't know what the gospel will be during that time. We'll be in glory. It doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Huh? Amen. But God's always in every dispensation of time had a way where man could come to Him. It's always by faith always by taking God at His Word, but there's a way for them to come to God. Thank God that God will make a way for folks that don't have the gospel now. There are communist nations we can't get the gospel to. Folks that have never heard the name of Jesus. But God will make provision even during great tribulation for them to come and trust in Him. Well, we see all that. We find that the Lord is saying He's coming. He's saying to the Jews, He's coming. These are signs of His coming. Now, friends, we can look around and see all this lining up. Hallelujah. Well, I got to thinking about this when I read this verse. And that first part of that verse says, For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west. Well, they tell me when a storm is nearing an end, the lightning flashes from east to west. And I got to thinking about that. I want to preach with a few minutes on this thought. I want to preach on the storm is almost over. Uh, you know why it flashes from the east and why he used that illustration? Because he is going to enter the eastern gate of, New, uh, of Jerusalem when he comes back to rule and reign. You understand that? But can I say the lightning is flashing from east to west and we're seeing uh, these things come to pass and the storm is almost over. Uh, hey, I'm glad, Brother James, uh, he can bear our burdens. Uh, and hey, Brother Phil, I'm glad he's always stood by us. Uh, uh, but friends, I got good news. Uh, uh, the storm clouds, the heartaches, the pressures, they're almost over. Uh, hey, it won't be long. Hallelujah. Uh, and we'll never have to face this again. Uh, I got to thinking about the storm is almost over. Can I say, first of all, the deluge is subsiding. 
that luge is a fancy w word for a heavy downpour that turns into a flood. Hmm? And can I say, in this world, you could end up with a flood of problems. Job says man's days are few and full of trouble. And you may, you may have come in here tonight with a truckload of problems. You may come in here tonight uh, overwhelmed, just flooded, uh, uh, thinking, when, uh, when will God hear my prayers? I've got good news, friend. The storm is almost over, uh, and the deluge is subsiding. Uh, it may be the flood of adversity. Uh, 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 you may just have a job uh, 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 or live in a community uh, or have family that no matter what you strive to do for Jesus' sake, uh, uh, they fight you every tooth and toenail. Uh, you may try to mind your own business uh, just be a good Christian just set a little light uh, it seems like all hell comes against you uh, it seems like every time you turn around you're facing more adversity more adversity uh, I've got good news friend the storm is almost over uh, hey just as the flood ended in Noah's days uh, hallelujah it's going to end in our days as well uh, uh, can I say hey, maybe it's the flood of apathy I'm so tired uh, of God's people being so apathetic uh, I'm not concerned about souls, not concerned about revival, not concerned about the goodness of God, uh, not willing to give Him praise in their life, uh, not willing to be a witness, uh, not willing to be light and salt in this dark world. Uh, uh, folks uh, have just come to the point where uh, 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 they are increased with goods and have need of nothing. Uh, uh, they've taken their ease. Uh, uh, they're comfortable showing up on Sunday morning only. Uh, I mean, preach this morning on, uh, are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Uh, I guess they're so ready they don't even need to come back tonight. Uh, hey, listen, uh, I'm so tired of the apathy. Uh, the Lord said uh, in Revelation 3 uh, at that church of Laodicea because uh, they were lukewarm, they weren't cold or hot. Uh, uh, he said, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. Uh, I know the Lord is sick of it. Uh, we're sick of it. Uh, but I've got good news. The storm is almost over. Uh, there'll be no apathy in heaven. Hallelujah. Uh, how about the flood of abuse I've never seen a time when so many people are hurting and dealing with demons of things that have happened to them being abused abused, and having, facing abusive things from other people I've never seen a, a time where folks have you know, they come to the house of God with a smile on their face, but they are carrying a baggage load of problems that most of us may never know anything about. Hmm? Listen. One, it's one thing, Brother Brian, to face physical abuse. And there's some that do that. It's another thing to face mental abuse. Hmm? Uh, you all know my granddaddy was a pastor, pastored the same church for 34 years, the greatest preacher I ever heard preach. But my granddaddy couldn't pastor today like he did back then. And they didn't face the problems we face today. Can I say most of the times of Miss Annette and I having to deal with folks, it's dealing with folks and how they were treated abusively by somebody else. Maybe a spouse, or maybe a, a parent, or maybe somebody in the job, or somebody in the community. It's amazing how many folks suffer internally, dealing constantly with never feeling like they'll be good enough because somebody has been so ugly to them. That's a terrible, terrible thing. There's a lot of folks that have been, been hurt and that are hurting, that have been cut all the way to the heart. And I'm glad Jesus has got a balm of Gilead and Jesus has helped a lot of folks but there's still a lot of folks that deal with issues and deal with problems I said this morning Jesus loves you you don't have to worry about being good enough he loves you Amen. he made you and Jesus will never harm you he always cares yeah. and I'm here to tell you there's a lot of folks suffering a lot of folks suffering mental abuse and physical abuse and all kinds of anguish and I'm glad the storm's almost over. Hmm? Uh, I've got pastor friends all over the world. You know that. When we talk, it seems like you know, all of us are facing folks or dealing with folks that are facing situations you never dreamed. But I mean, that sorry, no good devil's been crafty. Sure. And I've got good news. The storm is almost over. The deluge is subsiding. Can I say secondly, darkness is fleeing. 
We live in a dark world. Folks face a lot of dark things. Hmm? Can I say there's the darkness of corruption. I'm so tired of sin. What sin does to families and what sin does to homes and individuals. Uh, listen. I don't know how we got from here to there. I mean, in, a, in just a, a blinking of an eye, I don't know how we've got to where this opioid thing has taken hold like it has in our society. Amen. I mean, it's just, it seems like overnight. Now, listen, I know folks have had problems throughout the year. I, I grew up in the 70s. Listen to me, I know folks have always had drug problems. I remember the 60s. I remember LSD and all that. Hallelujah, God save me, I never dealt with any of that. But hey, there's always been a culture of drugs throughout the world and throughout America. But I'm talking about this opioid crisis is camped in every neighborhood. Hey, listen, my, my father-in-law over there at the courthouse, he'd tell you 90% of everybody that shows up at Boone County Courthouse is dealing with heroin. Yep. Yeah. It's terrible. Yep. Terrible. It's taking hold. I'm so tired of folks and their families being destroyed by that stuff. It's just come out this vaping thing is killing people. Duh. Huh? Can't be good for you. Uh, that was supposed to get you off cigarettes. Uh, they lied to folks for years about cigarettes, and then they had to start putting it on the packs. These things would kill you, and then by that time, people were addicted, and they was killing themselves with it. So now it was vaping. It's amazing. In my travels, in every little town, I'm talking about towns, Miss Mary, don't even have a traffic light. In every little town, you'll find a pizza place, you'll find a Mexican restaurant, and a vape shop. Everywhere. Some of them got a general dollar. Shout at Miss Pam, huh? Huh? But I'm telling you, every one of them's got a vape shop. Where'd they come from? Huh? All of a sudden, boom, vape shops everywhere. Huh? That devil's slick. Now it's coming out that's killing people. I'm going to tell you the next one. Seeing it everywhere. It's killing people. And they're saying, all this CBD stuff. If you don't know what that is, that's pot. Marijuana. Huh? Brian can tell you all about that. You know, he was a hippie before he got saved. Huh? Listen, I didn't say which one. Why y'all looking at him? We got a couple of Brian's in here, huh? Yeah, no, we got another one. Yeah, he's looking down on you right now like everybody else, huh? <laughs> Everywhere, CBD, Miss Nett went, to, and I went to the mall today. I had to get my bigger pants because, you know, I'm, I got fat overnight or something. Huh? And, and I mean, right in the center of the mall, they got these CBD shops. They're popping up everywhere. Huh? Uh, 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 listen, uh, uh, I get uh, emails from, about stuff to invest in. I get 20 to 30 emails a week about investing in these pot stocks. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, it's everywhere. Uh, what, what, what is all this? I tell you what it is. It's another way uh, uh, where the devil is controlling the minds of people and getting them addicted to things uh, uh, so he can drag their souls off the head. Uh, hey, but the storm is almost over. Uh, hey, what a blessing to know all the corruption's going to end. Uh, I'm just talking about stuff that's altering people's minds. I'm not even talking about the corruption going on in this land. Uh, politicians lie to you. Jobs will lie to you. Spouses will lie to you. I'm just, I mean, there is sin and wickedness everywhere. Uh, I'm glad that not everybody's wicked. I'm glad God's still got a remnant. I'm glad there's still some good folks. I'm glad there's some good moral folks that aren't saved. But I'm telling you, it seems like everywhere we go, it's getting darker and darker and darker and more corrupt. You're hearing more horrible things come out of churches and all kinds of things. Uh, 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 aren't you glad the storm is almost over? Sure. Darkness will be fleeing. The darkness of corruption. The darkness of confusion. Now listen, I know, I know we're independent Baptists, spit right, you know, walk right, and you know, dress right, all that kind of stuff. Let me go talk to Brother Bob. He's actually older than me. <laughs> He's a great grandpa. Listen, I remember a day, and you may too, but I remember a day when you have revival meeting and the Methodists would come out and, and, and other denominations come because they all had the right Bible. They all preached salvation right. And I, I remember over in Moscow, Ohio one time, there was a fellow that pastored both the Baptist and the Methodist church at the same time. 
Hmm. Nowadays, you can't even get Baptists together because a lot of Baptists don't believe the same anymore. It's so confusing. The devil's been crafty. Did he not lie to Eve in the garden? Well, why do you think there's 300 different denominations and religions in America? Because he confuses people. Amen. Keeps people in darkness. What did Paul say? Lest the glorious light of the gospel should shine unto them. Amen. We're living in a day and age of confusion. Hmm? But I'm glad, hallelujah, the storm is almost over. You know what happens when Jesus shows up? All the confusion will be done away with. Hmm? Yeah, amen. Huh? Can I say the darkness of concealment? There are a lot of things that are, uh, that are concealed from us. I'm glad I don't know. Yeah. I'm glad I don't know everything that our president knows. Yeah. I'm glad I don't know everything that our special ops know uh, and our generals know. And I, I'm glad I don't know all that stuff. There are some things that need to be kept secret. There are some things the CIA and the FBI and that stuff that so they're working on needs to be kept secret in order to, to be effective and keep uh, America safe. But can I say... There's also a lot of things that people are concealing, but one day God's going to reveal them. Sure. And the darkness is fleeing. Hallelujah. The storm is almost over. I thought about this. Uh, the storm's almost over. The damage is going to cease. I mentioned a minute ago, have you seen some of the damage done to the Bahamas? Yes. It's amazing how anybody survived that. That Category 4 hurricane just stopped and sat over that island yeah. for two days. Now, if you've never been to Caribbean Island, it's not like here. They don't use the same building codes we do. Matter of fact, if you get away from the tourist attractions, a lot of them just have uh, ten buildings, a few little uh, support, two-by-four support, holding up some ten. I mean, they, they live in, in just, you know, shacks. A lot of them still in and, and dirt floors and uh, they just live very base they have buckets that catch rainwater. that's their water and that thing absolutely destroyed that island it was just terrible a lot of damage some of you remember that windstorm that came through here several years ago and there's still houses in Oak Brook that haven't had the roofs fixed I mean just absolute damage that some things can cause but can I say the storms of life and the storms of wickedness and the storms that have been raging from the devil. And I believe he's, he's really pulled out all the stops because he knows his time is short. Amen. He's caused a lot of damage. Can I say there's the damage to homes. A lot of homes have been broken, destroyed. Hmm? Oh, it's easy to point the finger. But the bottom line is, homes have been destroyed. Hmm? Amen. And by the way, you might want to adjust your halo before you look down your nose at somebody else. It's only by the grace of God it hadn't landed at your home. Right. Hmm? Yes, huh? Homes have been damaged. Husbands and wives and children have been damaged. Hmm? Can I say... There's been damage to hearts. A lot of people have had uh, their hearts broken and destroyed. Can I say that one of the worst things can be destroyed? You get your heart broke by church people. Yes, sir. We could have revival in this country if we could just reclaim all the church people who's been hurt yeah. and get them back under the umbrella of God's grace. Hmm? A lot of people's had their hearts broken. They put confidence in people only for people to step on their heart. And then there's damage to our hopes. A lot of people's hopes and dreams have been destroyed. A lot of folks hit hard times in the uh, recession that our country went through a few years ago. And they haven't recouped it. A lot of folks have uh, had their hopes uh, shattered by all kinds of things. Some has been shattered by death, some of it by finances, some of it by disease. But I've got good news. The storm is almost over. Amen. The Lord is coming. I've got good news. He's going to right every wrong. Amen, Pastor. Hmm? Hmm? That's not easy being wronged. And you know what's even just as difficult? 
waiting for him to right the wrongs. Yes, sir. Sometimes we wonder, how long, Lord, am I going to have to suffer? Well, I promise you this, friend. You'll not suffer one second longer than the Lord has audited your life for. The reason you're going through something uh, may not understand, may not been the Lord's will, but the Lord is using that for Him to get glory and to better you and for you to impact somebody else's life. Amen. Sometimes you've got to have a thorn in for order for somebody else to see how great the Lord is in your life. The Apostle Paul prayed three times for the thorn of flesh to be removed. God said, my grace is sufficient. Hmm? Now, friend, it's never easy having a thorn. It's never easy having your hopes destroyed. But listen, set your sights on heaven. Set your sight on that blessed hope. And that hope will never be damaged. I thought about this. The storm is almost over. <laughs> Hallelujah, the devil's going to get his due. Amen. Hmm? Revelation 20:10, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah, glory, it's forever. Hmm? <laughs> Just as we shout, Hallelujah, for everlasting life, I shout that the devil's going to have everlasting torment. Hmm? For every individual he's ever harmed. For every lie he ever told. For every sin that he ever caused somebody to commit. For every home he's ever hurt. For every little child that's ever had to suffer because of that sorry no good snake. Hallelujah. He's going to get his due. Hmm? The Lord says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. And the Lord is going to judge that sorry snake and throw him off in the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. Amen. The Apostle Paul said, when you get to looking around at what God has in store for us, everything we're really facing right now is but a light affliction. Yeah. The Lord bore our heavy burden up Calvary's mountain. Oh, yeah. Amen. He took our death hell in the grave. Yeah. And no matter what we may face, it's just a light affliction. And we have a more exceeding weight of glory waiting on us when we see him as he is. Amen. And so, my dear friends, the storm is almost over. Listen, Miss Annette has a rule. You can do anything for 30 seconds, for 60 seconds, for just a short period of time. A few years ago, we took the kids down to Universal Studios. Now, when we first went to Universal Studios, it was E.T. and Jaws and King Kong, and you kind of rode through and saw how they did all this stuff. Well, that's good for old fogies. But kids like things that go up and down and go fast and twist and flip and spin and, and all that stuff so they build another part of Universal called Islands of Adventure where they have about 87 of the fastest, twistiest, craziest roller coasters you can get on. So the kids wanted to go. And the kids started telling me how old I was and how I couldn't do all that stuff. And Miss Nett said we can do anything for 30 seconds. And we did. I wrote every one of them, Chief. They got one called Superman. They got one called the Hulk. They got them all these, you know, Spider-Man. They got all these uh, 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 coasters. I read Brother Michael Jackson wrote, wrote every last one of them once. I didn't do them twice, but I did them once. Huh? I was never so sick, you know, spinning and all that in my head. But they didn't know that, huh? They'd say, oh, let's go again. Say, go ahead. Let me catch my breath. Go ahead. You go ahead. You enjoy it. And I'm sitting there dying, huh? I said all that, say, you, you can really go through anything when you realize you're not going through it alone. Yeah, how about that? The Lord's always with you, friend. And he who knows your limits limits your loads. He'll not put more on you than you're able to bear. And when you put things in their proper focus and you realize the storm is almost over, you can go through it. You can handle anything. Anybody, any of you fellows ever wrestle? 
I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, in the backyard, Brian. Anybody on a wrestling team? Them guys are nuts. You know, I played football and basketball and baseball when I was younger. Them wrestling guys, they're cut from another piece of cloth. Huh? We'd have basketball practice and they'd have wrestling practice over in another part of the gym. Those guys will run for days, only drinking water to make weight so they can wrestle. They get their body fat down next to nothing. Mm -hmm. And they run. And then they throw each other around on these mats. And then they'd bring the mats in the same locker room as us basketball players. And we weren't the, the sweetest smelling guys because we ran a lot too. Those guys smelled. I mean, they, they were nuts. But they tell me when they'd get in a hold, mm -hmm. they knew that pain only lasted six minutes. And if you could hold out for six minutes, you wouldn't get pinned. The pain only lasts for six minutes. There's something the brain will release, some kind of endorphin feel, that after six minutes of pain, it will subside in your body. Hmm? Now, if God built these sorry fleshly old bodies to know that it can endure for six minutes and relief will come, don't you think he gives us hope that relief's coming? Hmm? Huh? You can endure it, friend. Huh? It's, the Lord's coming. The storm is almost over. Amen. Say, preacher, I'm really up against it. Well, I've got good news. Storm's almost over. But I've even got better news. While you're in the storm, he's there with you. Just keep trusting. Keep looking. Keep the faith. And when it's all said and done, you'll say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Maybe you're here tonight. Say, Brother Doug, I'm really struggling. The first thing into getting help is admitting you need help. Yeah. When you think you can handle it, friend, you're, you're in trouble. But when you realize the Lord can handle it, and all you need to do is get to the Lord, friend, you're in good, good shape to get some help. If you're here tonight, say, Brother Doug, I'm struggling. That's a, that's a wonderful thing to know you're struggling. Now you need to know who to turn to, and his name is Jesus. Yeah. Maybe here tonight, and God's brought you through a storm. You ought to let the Lord know you're thankful. Say, God, thank you for not leaving me in the midst of that thing alone. Maybe here tonight, and God's just been, been dealing with your heart about being a better light or better witness in the community. Maybe God's touched your heart about somebody. Maybe you don't even know why. You never know. It might be somebody really going through a hard time, and maybe God just wants you to come and pray for that person. And put somebody on your heart. Why don't you just come and uphold them for God? They might be really going through a, through a terrible storm, and they need somebody to intercede on their behalf. Maybe you need to come pray for them. I don't know. But I know one thing, Brother Ray. The storm's almost over, Brother. I know you're looking forward to retirement. Hallelujah. One of these days we're checking out for good. Huh? What a blessing when the Lord comes to help his people. Let's all stand tonight. Maybe you need to come pray. I'm going to give you that opportunity. Maybe you need to come tell the Lord how much you love him. I'm going to give you that opportunity. Maybe you need to come thank him. I don't know. You just mind God tonight. But I do know this. The storm's almost over. This thing's a winding down. Maybe the Lord's burning your heart about somebody that's lost. You ought to come pray for them that God will save them. Folks are coming. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Whether they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we sure do love you. I'm glad we can see the lightning flashing from east to west. We know the storm is almost over. Lord, help us to finish the fight. Help us, Lord, having done all to stand, to stand there for. Help us, Lord, to do right until Jesus comes. Lord, we need your strength. We need your touch. We need your help. Without you, we can do nothing. Now, Lord, tonight somebody might really be struggling. I pray you just put your arms around them, love on them a little bit. Maybe somebody here tonight just uh, needs uh, to tell you that they love you. Whatever's needed, Lord, just speak to hearts. Help folks to mind God. God, get glory. God, thank you that this thing's winding down, that you're on your way. Oh, what a day that's going to be when we see you high and lifted up. Now, Lord, bless. Have your way in this invitation. Father, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Forums app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.